Welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. On today's video, I'm gonna smoke a brisket inside an electric smoker. Stay tuned. All right, so let's get started on our brisket. I'm starting with a 19 pound USDA prime brisket. And this one is from 1855 Meat Company where they carry upper two thirds choice and prime briskets. And if you guys have never tried them, man, you are missing out. I actually cooked these briskets on my food truck. I was using a different brand, but you'll see the marbling on this brisket is superior. Really good quality meat. I always dry the surface with a paper towel. Just makes it a lot easier to trim and easier to handle as well. All right, so I'm gonna start trimming this brisket and I wanna talk about electric smokers themselves. Now electric smokers were pretty popular before pellet smokers came to the scene and there are different variations of these electric smokers. Some are 100% electric where you cannot introduce any smoke whatsoever. And then there's electric smokers that would feed a hockey puck, if you will, and all it was was compressed sawdust, and they would feed it every hour or so, and that would create some smoke, giving the meat some smoke flavor. And the smoker that I'm gonna use for this cook, the electric smoker, uses sawdust, okay? It's my PK100. Now on the PK100 smoker, it does use a pan on the bottom. You fill it with sawdust, and it heats up like an electric stove. It's got one of those type of burners. And that actually starts smoking the sawdust inside the pan. And that's gonna create our smoke, giving our brisket a smoke flavor. But I've never, ever cooked a brisket on an electric smoker. And I've been wanting to do this cook for a very long time. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that don't have a pellet smoker because they started with an electric smoker. So this video is for you. Now I'm gonna be cooking this brisket with a fat cap down because on the PK100 smoker, the heat is coming from the bottom. The burner is actually on the bottom. So I wanna protect this precious meat on the top. So I'm gonna to try to remove most of the silver skin. If you have small pockets, don't worry about it. Okay, I'm gonna go under the silver skin here. You can see how easy it is to trim off. Again, a little bit, it's not gonna hurt anything. All right, let's check out that fat cap. And I'm trimming this brisket exactly how I trim it, as if it was going on my offset smoker, okay? So this mohawk comes completely off. I like to save all of this trim for sausage or making burger as well. Now, I really don't think aerodynamics plays a huge part inside an electric smoker but I'm gonna trim it that way anyway, just to see what happens. <clears throat> and just in case you're wondering, I am using a Dell Strong filet knife, which I love to trim my briskets with. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys something I recently started doing on my briskets because I'm using so many on my food truck that I started to trim this big fat pocket off, okay? I noticed that if you leave it on there, you're gonna take it off after the cook and no customer wants that much fat on their brisket, okay? A little bit is okay, but man, you've got to take some of this off. It's just way too much. Just where it's nice and flat, okay? Okay, that looks good. Now let's shape our brisket. Come on this side, and when it starts to get thin, start to come in and turn your knife. Just like that. Now all you have to do on this side is make it even, so we're gonna cut this piece off. Again, nothing goes to waste. Cut this corner and just round it off. Really simple. And there you have it, guys. This is exactly how I trim my briskets. Take a little bit more fat off of here, and we are good. Again, I'm cooking this fat cap down, so I'm gonna start seasoning the fat cap first. Gonna apply a little bit of mustard as a binder. Just a little bit. 
So I'm going to be seasoning this brisket with my modified SPG, which is one cup of black pepper, half a cup of kosher salt, quarter cup of garlic, and a quarter cup of paprika. Smoked paprika, gives us a nice smoky flavor, if you will. And add enough of the rub. Remember, this is a big piece of meat. It's gonna be interesting to see what kind of bark we produce inside an electric smoker. Again, I've never done it before, but I know a lot of people that have those electric smokers. All right, get your edges. All right, let's season up the meat side of this brisket. Look at that beautiful piece of meat, nice marbling. A little bit of mustard and our SPG. All right, let's head outside and fire up my PK100. Stay tuned. All right, so we're outside. I've got my PK100 set at 250 degrees, which is the highest temperature that you can run the PK100 smokehouse. Right now it's sitting at 197 degrees, so I'm letting it come up to temperature. So here's my sawdust pan that I was talking to you guys about earlier. I filled it up with hickory sawdust, added some water just to moisten up the sawdust. Then I created this hole in the center. That's gonna create this wick effect. It's gonna give us smoke for a longer period of time. And this goes on the bottom side of the PK100, right on top of the burner. So let me show you guys that. So there's the burner on the PK100 smoker. And again, your sawdust pan goes right on top of that burner. Okay, just like that. Be very careful. Now there are seven shelves inside this PK100 smoker. And I'm gonna put the brisket right smack in the middle. And you also have a drip pan. Now you can put foil on this just to keep things clean, but I'm gonna run it without the foil. So just slide this right under the rack where I've got my brisket that's gonna catch all of our juices. All right, so let's close the door to the PK100. And by the way, this PK100 is extremely well insulated. So it holds heat very well. I've got the intake and the exhaust completely closed. We'll check on our brisket in about five hours. Stay tuned. All right, so five hours later, let's take a look at our brisket and see what we're looking like. All right, so on the point, we are already at 172 degrees. And on that flat, we're sitting at 170 degrees. So the brisket still isn't tender, so I'm gonna let it cook for a couple more hours. Then I'll come outside and wrap it in foil. Let's check out that ash can and see how we're looking. Now be careful because it's really hot. Remember, it's sitting right on top of that burner. So as you can see, that ash is completely burned down. So I'm gonna let this cool down, fill it back up, maybe about halfway, just to get a little bit more smoke. Put it right on top of that burner, and we'll see you guys in a couple of hours. Stay tuned. All right, so the total cook time right now is seven hours. I just pulled the brisket out, and I am loving that nice dark bark. It's hard to imagine that that came off of an electric smoker. So let's get an internal temperature. Turn this so you guys can see it. All right, so we're at 182 on the point. Whoa, that thing's gushing out. Still really tough on the flat. We're sitting at 159 or so. So I'm just gonna transfer this over to some foil. I was thinking about using butcher paper, but I changed my mind. And I'm gonna use foil paper. And by the way, the aroma is absolutely insane in here. It smells so good. So I'm gonna add a little bit of tallow to the top of this brisket because the surface does look a little bit dry. Again, I haven't spritzed or anything, okay? So just a little bit of tallow, not much. All right, now I'm gonna wrap this up like I do when I use butcher paper. Just fold it over the top, it's really nice and tight. Fold one side over, fold the other side over. All right, remember the fat cap is down right there and I want it down again so the fat cap is up. So the excess foil, I'm just gonna fold it so that it protects that fat cap on the bottom. Just like that. All right, really nice and tight. We're looking for a nice tender brisket. I'll let you guys know exactly how long it takes and what the internal temperature on the brisket was at that point. Stay tuned. All right, so the brisket is ready and the total cook time was nine and a half hours inside of our PK100 smoker at 250 degrees. Now this has been resting on my counter for one hour, but it's still gonna be really hot and nice and juicy as you can see. So I'm gonna take this out of the foil and see what we've got. You guys ready for this? Can an electric smoker smoke a good brisket? Oh man, you guys are gonna be in for a surprise. Look at that. 
nice looking bark, nice and moist on the surface. Again, we did add a little bit of tallow because the surface was a little bit dry for me. And I cannot wait to slice into this bad boy. All right, let's slice into this electric smoker brisket. First off, I gotta tell you, the aroma in here is fantastic. Now, I am a little bit worried because the temperature did get to 204 degrees before I got to check the internal temperature, so hopefully it didn't overcook, but let's find out. It was nice and tender, but let's see. It feels tender. Now, we don't have much of a smoke ring, which is interesting, but again, this was an electric smoker. And our flat, nice and juicy, but no smoke ring. Remember, we smoked this with a fat cap down, okay? But that is very interesting that I didn't get any smoke ring whatsoever on this brisket. I'm gonna take some point slices. So here's our point slice. Now this brisket is still really nice and hot. I should have let it rest at least another hour or so, but it's nice and juicy, as you can see, really nice and tender. Let's see if it pulls apart, super easy. Look at that. All right, let's get a slice off the flat right here. Very interesting. No smoke ring whatsoever. Kind of looks weird without a smoke ring, but is it tender? Absolutely, look at that. Pulls right apart. Let's give it a taste. All right, let's give this point a try first. Check it out, nice and juicy, but the smoke ring is a mystery to me. What do you guys think happened? Why did we not get a smoke ring? Leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys think. But let's check the flavor. It smells amazing. Here we go. That's a damn good tasting brisket right there. Smoke ring or no smoke ring, that is tasty. All right, now let's try the piece of the flat right here. Get nice and juicy. But the smoke ring is MIA. Here we go. Mmm. So a lot of people say that smoke ring is not an indication of flavor. It's absolutely true. This brisket right here is fantastic, even without a smoke ring. All right, so let's recap this cook real quick. I smoked this brisket on my PK100 smoker at 250 degrees with a full pan of sawdust. At the seventh hour, I emptied out the ash that's inside my sawdust pan and refilled it so it got a double dose of smoke, but still no smoke ring. Total cook time, nine and a half hours. I can't wait to read the comments down below on the mystery of the missing smoke ring. Again, let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If this is your first time to my channel, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Until next time, Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. See ya.